First question is from Mr. Kennedy. Can you talk about the different deadlift variations, traditional sumo, touch and go, Romanian deadlift, and the benefits of each? Should you vary them up? Should you vary them up? Okay. okay. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. It sounded like you were going to say some more them stuff. Yeah. Should um, they bury them? You know, one of the sometimes one of the challenges with exercises is that if they have a similar name oh, or I'm they have the same name, this. I'm glad you're going this way. Yeah, you you end up thinking that they're all interchangeable. So like so, front squat, Bulgarian split stance squat, back squat. You think, oh, they're all squats. So I'll just pick one and do that one. The truth is, they're all. Different exercises, Same very, thing with the very different. Too. Yeah, it's yeah. not even. I mean, so I mean, some are like similar, but very, very different. Yeah, and with deadlifts, it's, it's even worse because the powerlifting community, which is the the one strength sport that really emphasizes deadlifts more than any other strength sport, right? Because it's in their competition, they allow you to to deadlift conventional or sumo. Doesn't matter. Those both count the same when you're doing your deadlift. And so people have, you know, they've assumed that they're kind of interchangeable. The reality is they're all different exercises. Now, some of them are more similar than the others, but they're all different, right? A sumo deadlift and a traditional uh, conventional deadlift, although both count in powerlifting, they are different on the body. They work the body totally different. Just because you're good at one doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be good at the other one. And then they can get very different, like a Romanian deadlift or a stiff-legged deadlift. Very different from a conventional deadlift and a sumo deadlift. Um, so should you vary them? Absolutely. I think you totally should. I think it's a good idea to get good at one, and then once you get real good at it, you can transfer and move to another one. It's okay to have your favorite. Um, you know, My favorite is conventional. It's the way I love to deadlift. But I'll throw in sumo and trap bar deadlifts all the time, and I'll go through runs of training those to get really good at those. Um, Romanian deadlifts, that's a leg workout. You know that, that one I do in my leg workout. I don't do it in my back workout like I do conventional. Well, and I think that something that we say ad nauseum on this show is that you, the one that's going to benefit you the most is the one that you do the least. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're somebody who's like uh, you, if you deadlift consistently, but you always do conventional, Sumo deadlifting for a while is going to be great. Great for strength gains, great for body composition, mm -hmm. great for fat burning. I mean, that is where you should go. If you train a certain way all the time, then mixing up. The only time it makes sense to do the same one all the time for me is if I'm training an actual competitor. Yeah, they have to get good at that one. Yeah, version. like if I have so, yeah. and that doesn't mean I'll, I'll never intermittently still use uh, mm -hmm. use the opposite. So if I have a someone who pulls sumo and that's what they they pull at their competition, we are going to pull sumo ninety percent of the time, maybe ninety five percent of the time. Still we'll do some other other way forms of deadlifting intermittently in there, but we want to be good at that movement because that's what they're going to go perform in. Everybody else, though, if you're just trying to get strong or you want to be you know healthy and fit or you want to change the way your body looks. The best thing you could possibly do is actually rotate through these. And yeah. how do you rotate through those? Uh, you know, there's there's no like one rule on how you have to do it. I personally like to keep one of those for sure always in my routine, if not one or two of those. And I'll stick to that for at least four to eight weeks before I rotate another one in. Exactly. Yeah. That's, the, that's exactly the way I yeah, do it. Yeah, and I think too, like there's, there's uh, you know, if I'm going uh, for um, – Different, um, what do they call adaptations. So, uh, if if I'm going for something where I'm more power focused, I'm more speed focused. For instance, I'm going to be more likely to do like a touch and go, and that's something that fits within my programming. And so I'll look at you know the options of what types of exercises will fit best within the actual program itself, or if I want to move in different directions, or you know really expose my body to different types of stimulus and movement. And I'll do something like if I never do sumo, then I'm going to switch it up and I'm going to rotate that in the programming. But I, I want to look at this as like like these are all different types of tools that fit great within you know this sort of pursuit that I have. So I'm glad you brought up touch and go because I would say touch and go is my least favorite of all of these. That's that are, the one you need to have the most control and best skill and, and, and technique. It, and it also makes the most sense, I would say, in, in only situation that Justin just mentioned. Like mm. you're really trying to work on the, the speed of a movement versus yes. the strength of that movement or getting good at that movement. Because touch and go, there's so much more room for air in that than just a standard pull a rep, gather yourself, pull a rep, gather yourself, yeah, the, pull the a rep. The point is the intent matters. Yes. So yes. you have to like evaluate that. Yeah. And the, the problem with touch and go is not that you're continuously deadlifting, because that's okay. You can do that with any exercise. Here's the problem. You have a long bar in your hands and you're doing, I don't know, 10 reps, let's say. 
on one of those reps, the left side touches the floor before the right and one, just, even if it's a split second. Yeah, I was going to say, it's just a split Yeah, and it second. shifts you to the right or left, and if you have a lot of weight, it can yeah. cause problems. So your technique needs to be really, like really good. Sound. And, and you need to be real stable. Like I'll never do touch, touch and go with super, super heavy weight. I've done it in the past, um, right. haphazardly. Not a good idea. Yeah, and not to mention the, the benefits that you get from it from just doing a the conventional way of deadlifting where you actually have a little bit of rest in between, right, where you go and pull, mm -hmm. you're not getting that much more benefit by doing the touch and go. Yeah. So for me, it it really had the client has to be there. They have to already be advanced enough where they they've been like if I was training one of you two, maybe we'll throw it in there. And even then, I just still don't see a tremendous amount of value in touch and go yeah. uh, deadlifts. So I I there's I'm trying to think right now who I've trained where we have programmed that in, most clients, I, I'm having them you, you know, gather I, themselves. Uh, I, you know, a few uh, bodybuilders might benefit from touch and go, not going real heavy and focusing on the continual tension of the back and squeezing the lats. That might work. Here's another thing about deadlifts. Because of the influence of powerlifting, we, uh, a lot of people deadlift with an alternate grip, uh, one hand mm. forward, one hand back. And mm -hmm. that's because you can hold on to more weight. So I get that. Do this. If you do that, make sure you switch hands in between every other set, right? Do just as much work with your left hand supinated yeah. as you do with your right hand supinated. I fell into this trap for years. I deadlifted and I was better with the right supinated than the left, so that's what I stuck with. And I developed an imbalance in my back that probably still to this day yeah. I have a little bit. It took me a long it time. It's an unnecessary torsion it, it, in the back. Right. So either alternate them back and forth or use a hook grip. That's what I do now. I use a hook grip and now both hands are pronated.